Hello everyone and welcome to Writing Today. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about descriptive writing. I'm going to show you some techniques and tips to make your writing more descriptive, more vivid, more engaging. I'll be giving you some examples in some popular fiction and also a few exercises so you can have some fun practicing these tips and techniques. As always, you can read this blog post on my website, thependsleuth.com. There's a link to that in the description below as well as a link to a free writing course. In that course, we talk about fantasy world building, so if that's something you might be interested in, be sure to check it out. Now, while descriptive writing isn't in my writing style, I do recognize it as a major part of fiction. A lot of writers like to create a vivid, imaginative world, and the best way they can do that is to convey the world in a descriptive manner. This makes the world space a lot more immersive and enjoyable. And there are many writers out there who like a story where the writer has painted a great picture of the world space. So let's begin with some tips and techniques. I should say before we get into the very first tip is that you might not use every single one of these techniques, although all of them have a place in descriptive writing. So you can pick and choose which one best fits your style. Tip one is to show, not tell. As a writer, I'm sure you have heard this phrase a million times. One of the most important things to keep in mind when writing descriptive passages is to show not tell. This means using sensory details and specific concrete words to paint a picture for the reader, rather than simply telling them what is happening. For example, instead of saying the air is cold, you could say a gust of icy wind bit through my coat and sent shivers down my spine. It's very easy to stick with that former sentence rather than the latter, especially if you enjoy more simplistic, straightforward writing like I do. But the key is that you can still be straightforward and descriptive. It all comes down to conveying necessary information in a vivid, imaginative way. Of course, this technique also comes down to the kind of story that you want to tell, what personality you want to convey in a character. Tip number two is to use figurative language. Another technique that can add depth and interest to your descriptions is the use of figurative language, such as similes, metaphors, and personification. These comparisons can help a reader visualize the scene or concept in a more vivid and engaging way. For example, you could say, the stars twinkled like a million fireflies, or the waves crashed against the shore like thunder. When it comes to the emotional impact of some scenery, these descriptions hit home as they add this feeling to them, this weight to the words. By using such language, you create more emotional impact with your descriptions, because you tackle the sensory elements that these images create. It all comes down to really comparing one thing to another, by adding a certain element to it that makes it a lot more interesting. You'll see more of this when I talk about some later examples. Tip number three is to vary your sentence structure. Varying your sentence structure can also help keep the reader engaged and make your writing more dynamic. Mix up your lengths and rhythms, and don't be afraid to use shorter, punchier sentences alongside the longer, more lyrical ones. I would say that this is a crucial piece of advice for those who want to get into descriptive writing and avoid the amateur mistakes that a lot of writers make. A lot of writers, when they get into descriptive writing, think that they need to hammer home lengthy descriptions, one after the other. But all you're doing is creating writing that is painfully slow to read, rather than impactful descriptions that have a lasting effect on the reader. Tip number four is to be specific, not vague. When it comes to descriptions, I wouldn't say that this is a hard piece of advice that you must follow to the letter, because sometimes abstract descriptions can add to the scene as well. But by using specific, concrete words rather than vague or abstract ones, you'll also help make your descriptions more vivid and engaging. For example, instead of saying, the woman was angry, you could point out some factual elements that add to that description, such as the woman's cheeks flushed red and her fists clenched at her sides as she seethed with fury. Once more, you're saying pretty much the same thing, just in a better way. You're taking other details and using them to add to the emotion of the scene. This is a great way to convey the scene and the emotions of the character. You are taking specific details that are easy to ignore and only imagine. In doing so, you paint a better picture of the scene, or in this case of the character, 
and you underline their emotions with these details. This isn't something that you can do with vague descriptions, as vague descriptions have a different effect on one's writing. It creates a different tone. Again, something you'll see in a later example from C.S. Lewis. Tip number five is to simply avoid cliches and overused phrases, as they can spoil a good description. While I'm not against cliché concepts and ideas, cliché writing and overused phrases can be distracting and make your writing feel stale. This is where imagination comes into descriptive writing. You have to be able to convey information in a unique way, rather than settling for the same old phrases. There are so many better ways to convey information and set a scene for the reader than titled phrases like it was a dark and stormy night. Unless you're being ironic, that phrase won't help your story at all. To give you a better idea of how these techniques work in practice, I'll go through a few passages with you so you can see how professional authors did it. Take this passage from Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, by J.R.R. Tolkien. The wide world was all about them, the long white road behind, the sparkling river ahead. And all the while, fields and hills, folds of the land and trees, and in the distance the secrets of the untold countries. The air was very clear, and the sky was blue, blue as if it had been enameled, and the happy sun was beginning to climb the sky, sending out beams all around, and drinking the dew. In this passage, Tolkien uses a lot of sensory words in order to better convey the scene. Phrases such as sparkling river or the personification of the sun drinking the dew is a great way to establish that tone. At the same time, Tolkien wants to add an adventurous element to the story, with reference to the long white road, as well as secrets of untold countries, you get this feeling immediately. Another example comes from J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. When Harry first enters the wizarding world, Rowling uses descriptive language to bring the magical setting to life. The first sign that they were entering a strange world was the sudden appearance of a huge hand-painted sign, pointing the way to the Hogwarts Express. Harry could make out the words painted in bright red letters, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. He stared at the sun, feeling a warmth spread through him that had nothing to do with the sun. Again, a great use of descriptions to add to that vivid scene. And the tone of this passage is warmth, from the handwritten sun, which is a warm element as opposed to a sun that's been written out by a cold machine. Then there's the bright red letters, another emphasis on that warmth, and then finally, that is that feeling that Harry feels looking at the sun. Here's another passage from C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. It was the sort of house that you never seemed to come to the end of, and it was full of unexpected places. The first few doors they tried led only into spare bedrooms, as everyone had expected they would. But soon they came to a very long room full of pictures, and there they found a suit of armour, and after that was a room all hung with green, with a harp in the corner. And then there was a room full of books, more books than anyone could have imagined. In this passage, Lewis contrasts more abstract description with more specific descriptions. He mentions the house doesn't seem to have an end, or a room filled with books more than one can imagine, and at the same time points out specifics, such as the harp, or the suit of armour, or the room hung with green. So yes, while Lewis does use some abstract descriptions here, he does ground it, shape it better with the specifics that he does mention. And these are just a few examples, but you can find many excellent descriptions in all sorts of works and media. Take some time to explore novels that you are fond of and see if you can find any techniques that catch your eye. Now that you've heard some tips and seen some examples, all that's left to do is put it into practice. Here are a few prompts and exercises to get you started. First, you can describe a character's appearance in detail, using sensory details and specific concrete words. Or, you can write a descriptive passage about a place you've never been, using your imagination and research to create a vivid and immersive setting. Or, you can use descriptive language and figurative language to describe the mood or atmosphere of a scene. 
The final prompt is to write a descriptive passage about an object using any of the techniques mentioned before. And remember, the key to writing effective descriptions is to convey necessary information in an engaging way. You want to present details that serve your story in some way, be it describing your main character, setting the scene, or progressing the plot. And if you want to share your writing with others, you can do so in the comments below. I do hope you enjoyed this video on descriptive writing, but if you want a more in-depth look on the topic, as well as some more examples and actionable steps, then I recommend checking out my descriptive writing course. To access this course, you need only join my Writer's Workshop. There's a link to that in the description below, where you can learn more about the Writer's Workshop and the benefits it has. And by signing up to the Writer's Workshop, you not only get access to that course, but all of my writing courses and future writing courses as well. Of course, if you do want to see my teaching methods before you sign up to the workshop, there's a link to a free course on fantasy world building in the description below as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found these techniques useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode of Writing Today. As always, good day, good night, and happy writing.